All right, so as promised, we're going to take a look at where the loading and the user um, values come from. And in order for us to understand that, we need to create what is called a provider or a context provider. And I'm going to create yet another file under the lib folder, and I'm going to call that authcontext.js. And again, I'm going to copy a fair amount of code, but we're going to go through that. It's about 50 lines of code here. So this particular file is creating a user provider. And again, here's this famous uh, 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 children thing here. Um, what I do, I basically create a context where I'm going to monitor the existence of a user and a loading uh, property in an object. So loading property starts with false, the user property starts with null. And what this will allow me to do and what this context that I create will allow me to do is to apply this globally to any part of my Next.js application. And basically with this auth context.js file, I also create a use user uh, sort of custom hook and a use fetch user, which will try to grab the user if it exists. Okay. And where does it get it from? Well, it will try to get it from a local cookie. So basically, remember, if someone is going to be logged in, we're going to set a cookie. So then the auth context file is going to try to grab that user from the local cookie. And if I go to auth.js, there is a function that says get user from local cookie, which very much returns cookie.get for the username. And if it does return something, and if our component is mounted, then I'm going to set the user to essentially to the username. So basically I'm going to grab the username from the cookie and set it in my context so that other parts of my application will be able to access that. Why will they be able to access that? Because when I create this user provider, I basically wrap this user provider around the children. What is children going to be? Children is going to be all the, um, all the other components and parts of the page that I wrap this auth context around. So maybe that's, you know, let's actually do this as opposed to me trying to explain at a theoretical level what's happening. So, you know, let's just assume that we have this, you know, this, this context created, which will either return us a user or not. And loading is going to be a Boolean. So while we're trying to fetch the user, this is going to say true. Once we found a user, loading is going to go back to false. Okay, that's what we're doing here. And we're going to try to get the user information from the cookie, which we do set when someone is logged in right here. And then we basically try to get that uh, information back using this helper function. That's pretty much um, what's happening here. Right, so then, how do we make this happen? How do we use this? So let's go back to nav. And because we have that sort of custom, um, you know, use, um, uh, use user uh, hook, we can leverage that. So let's do const, grab the user and the loading properties from use user, which we're going to import from this auth context that we have created, like so. And now we will have access to this mystical loading and user properties, okay? So I'm going to really quickly hit save and believe it or not, our code is now going to work. Here it is, right? So we have home films, we have a username input and a password input, and then we have login and register. Now, of course, we still need to figure out how that login will actually work. So there's still some more work that we need to do. In fact, I just realized that the styling for this is a little bit off. And that is because I need to install one quick dependency. Tailwind CSS has a separate 
a package for managing forms. So I'm just going to say at tailwind CSS forward slash forms. So I'm just going to install that. And I'm also going to add that to my tailwind configuration real quick so that our input form is actually going to be uh, looking a lot better. So I'm just going to say require at tailwind CSS slash forms. And I'm also going to use the class strategy to load that. Okay, so if, there we go. Now our form looks a lot better. Okay, so we have a user. Or actually, let's check in Strapi if we have a user. So let's see, user, and we have this guy called Steve here. Steve has the password of test1234. Uh, of course, just make sure that you remember your user or you set up a user and you remember the password. So let's hit login. And of course, the mistake is that I use data twice as a const. So this one is, let's see how we should rename it. We should rename that to be, let's call it response data, maybe. That should do the job. So let's do response data and then set token from the response data and in here notice that i put header as opposed to headers so i'm going to hit save and fingers crossed that is the issue that we had so let's try to log in okay so we did manage to log in something happened let's just to just take a look at this again so let's just refresh Steve test one two three. So we're not getting any errors. The page does refresh. So let's see if we get any cookies, and the cookies are there. But still, the navigation is not really reflecting that. We don't see the profile and we don't see other things. So there's still some work that we need to do, but at least we're getting there. And of course, we can change this to fetcher, I think. So let's just do a, a refresh real quick and steve test one two three four oh and of course i'm sorry i'm just jumping around here um we need this to be response data and we don't need to call this again because our fetcher which is a wrap around the fetch api does take care of everything for us and great okay so now things are working we do get the jwt the jot token in there we get the username and we have the id for our using the cookies however we still need to do some work to you know make our nav um, behave in the right way um, so to speak um, so let's actually do that right so, so navigation as far as everything is concerned is done but what we need to apply now is this auth context we need to make sure that our application is aware of the fact that we have a user and a user is logged in. How can we do that? Well, let's start with index.js. Remember this layout. Now, with this layout, we can do very, very clever things because every page that we've created is wrapped around the layout itself. And so if I open layout.js, we can, believe it or not, use our user provider so as opposed to having the layout to be an empty fragment we can create the user provider and therefore wrap the entire content of the layout therefore wrapping the entire content of every single page that we have around this user provider which means that every single page will also subsequently have access to the user and to that user um, object so let's do that let's import the user provider from auth context and let's actually have the user provider edit here as opposed to that empty fragment and that's why in the auth context we also have children right so we have access to children which as i said are going to be the, the actual content of the pages so we have children here as well. And then let's grab the user and let's have loading false here as well. Now for the user provider, we're going to pass in 
the user and the loading as values. And let me just see here, that should be it. Now, once we've done that modification, we can go to any page and let's start with the index page. And all we need to do is reference the use fetch user from auth context, which I'll show you again. Use fetch user is going to use a state and the user fact, and it's going to try to grab the user from a local cookie. Now, we do have a user set in the cookie, but we're not doing anything with that information. Inside this auth context, we are setting the user so that it is available for us, but we're not reusing it anywhere. And that's what we're going to fix. So we're going to say user, uh, you know, we could also grab loading. We don't, you know, really have to, and then use fetch user. And all, I, all we need to do is for the layout, we just need to pass in the user. And just by doing this, we will be able to, if I just go back to the index page, we'll be able to render the right menu. Now, of course, if I go to films, that is not being utilized by the nav bar because this particular page, the films page, is not yet aware of that. But we can, of course, fix that in the same way how we just fixed index. So we again, we need to do const user loading, which is, as I said, optional, use fetch user and layout. We just need to pass in the user information. And we need to now modify every single page that we have created so that they actually know if there's a user or not. Now, let's just for a test, see what happens if I click log out. Cookies got deleted and the nav bar changed back to what it was. Now, if I log in, test one, two, three, four, cookies are set. Because the cookies are set, we can provide the context. The context will get the username verifying that there is in fact a cookie. The username cookie is being then uh, read by the context. The context applies to the entire page, which we then load uh, as part of our layout. So it's going to be applicable to every single uh, sub page and sub component that we've created. So that's pretty much our authentication flow. And what we'll do now is we're going to, of course, need to add the same stuff for uh, the slug file, but I'll let you do that as a homework. And then we will try to add some functionality in here that will allow us to add the reviews but only do that if we have an active user or a valid user that is logged in to the system.